part out here for transsexuals and drag queens, as well as drag kings, but it's a little bit more harder on them, I think. Nobody calls me cheap. <laughs> Period. A little bit more prejudice, I think, because a lot of clubs don't here in North Carolina, well, here in Raleigh, okay. don't choose to book a lot of the drag kings. It's <laughs> a lot of work back here to do this. My boy Ignacio right here. He does my hair. I don't go nowhere else unless he pack, which he usually most of the time sometimes is. So he down here off of Atlantic Spring Road. You know what I'm saying? I don't know the address by heart like that, but I'm gonna throw him out there. I'm gonna get the same. Five four four zero Atlantic Spring Road. You know what I'm saying? The boys will hook you up. Got El Truco over there, but he's not here right now. Leo, we're in a, we're very early. We VIP. Okay, okay. We, we <laughs> they shut the door. <laughs> a male illusionist, uh, in my perspective, what I do, I'm a female. I live my life as a female. Um, I just transform into a male, uh, preferably the artist or somewhat like the artist. I kind of have my own um, persona. Nation is my persona. I'm a real person. I'm a real girl, you know. But um, I have kind of an alter ego, and that is released on stage. Male illusionist is, embodies a man. You cannot have a comparison whether this is a female or a male because you're already thinking that it's a male because of the outwardly outwardly appearance and the way that the gestures are, the movements, the, the, the everything about that person, that entertainer have to encompass a male, preferably the entertainer that is singing the track that the, that the MI is impersonating. I think it's, it's more reality, it's more of a, like a drag king to me is Sparkles shine. I do have my fair share of the sparkles and stuff, but um, a male illusion is more is a, is, is more of a spirit thing. It's movements as a male and 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 feeling like there's no way in the world that this could be a female that you're looking at. So, uh, I like that 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 whole the whispers and stuff like that in the crowd. Like, oh, was that a girl? You know, I like that because I take all of that off at the end of the night. At the end of the night, after the show is done, it comes off. If I had to name my hand, I name this bitch the Justin hey, Bieber. What is wrong with that? Bieber. <laughs> <laughs> I got the Justin Bieber. That's not right. That's not right. That depends on how you interpret it. I got a bomb ass hand. Maybe I love Justin Bieber. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> what is a Justin Bieber hand? You about to find out. <laughs> 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 Pay attention to these, these cards, and this is how I feel about Justin Bieber. <laughs> I'm at Image looking for something. Let's she just say we have some extracurricular <laughs> activities <laughs> <laughs> that we both have in common. Okay. <laughs> and we just hit it off, and she just became, she found out who I was, and she just was, she was cool with me. Like, we yeah, Image, we go back. When I needed a friend, God supplied me with image. Was Nation performing when you met her? Yeah, she was uh, performing, but she didn't have a car. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is one of my crowns. This is from South Florida International Stud. This is my sash. My uh, this, this is when I won it, 2008. I reigned for actually two years instead of one. 2008 and 2009, I reigned. 
um, in that pageant. I won every category. Um, this is Mr. Tar Heel State. It says first alternate, but I actually was the, the, the MI in that because the, all, the actual winner, he won by default because I was late. But I won every category in that pageant as well. So Nation, uh, but she had shows on shows on shows. So I ain't gonna front. She had, I mean, she can be in Alabama, she can be in Mississippi, she can be in Memphis, she can be in Oklahoma. This, I remember we was riding down the street one day. Just chilling like neither one of us. We both was on unemployment. We didn't have a job. We were looking for we were looking for employment, looking for jobs. Back then, I had this PT Cruiser. I used to call it uh, what was it? It used to be Touring. It was a Touring edition. It was limited. It did. Pop, pop, pop. We riding down this strip, and we saw a homeless dude with a sign. This idiot pulled over and wanted to take a picture on her iPhone with a homeless dude. And we used to take that PT Cruiser. <laughs> that Jane went up and down the East Coast, straight up into the Midwest. This nation will rise up. So you you did drinking shows? No, I just uh, had fun with Nation <laughs> and got paid for it. <laughs> okay, so I, I, I. Got paid for it. That was Nation's um, little secret weapon at times. Yo, DC, I need y'all to show Virginia some love right now. Y'all show them some love. They all pretty and red. So they call theirs the Dom Show, and mm -hmm. then they have stud shows. And it's so many categories. Yeah. It's uh, that's the crazy thing. Like even in in my game, we got in my females and we got in my transgendered. In my transgendered are females that don't consider themselves women. They consider themselves as men. They think that they were born that way. Mm -hmm. They think that the outwardly appearance is not what they are inside. You know that's transgender. That's not what I am. Not every drag king tapes. Right. You just, they you just choose to tape. No. No. Male illusionist tape. Drag kings, all of them, they don't have to if they can pull it off. Duck tape is a great one. Ace band just, um, sometimes we use a little, so anything that'll get them down. Okay. For me, it's a little bit harder because I'm a little larger than normal. But, I mean, whatever it takes to get them down. But if I'm in competition with a drag king that does not tape, I probably win. Right here, right now, the best entertainment in the town. Coming near you, you need to get your money. Fight your way to the front because it's going down. Right here, right now. Right here, right now. Right here, right now. You came to Atlanta to go to Job Corps. At what age? Okay. And you are Playboy. 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 It's Nilla, right? Yeah. Pay attention. What's going on? This is the father. Oh, this is Sincere. I'm Leslie. Nice to meet you. I had to get. I had to get the you know the reunion on camera. Yeah. I met Nation back in the 90s as Terminator. A little hard rock young fella that troublemakers why I used to always call him, little Tyree. I was a, a rebel myself back in the days, but they kind of looked up to me because of my entertainment value and I entertain to everyone. I don't just limit it to certain people. I make sure everybody has a good time with my shows. Yeah. And um, they just grew on me as a family. And then Sincere became my brother. Okay. Uh, so that made Nation my nephew. Mm -hmm. But I took on the role as Nation's godfather, so that's why they called me G-Pop. So I was nervous. I've never been to Atlanta before, ever. And I, I, we were going to the clubs, like, it's just a group of us, like, the new, the newbies, you know. 
just load up and get dressed up and going to Atlanta for the first time type thing. You know, it was all exciting. So, isn't that where I met you at G Pop? Uh -huh. Sleazy queasy. That's, that's sums it up. <laughs> then cut to the quick. It's like that's the, that is a strip club for drag queens and kings. But it ain't no strip. Like they don't strip. It's just it's built like a strip club. Like it's just a big open space. People are seated down there to see and shit. That's what they come to the club to do. It's always back like that. Always usually. I had seen it the week before that they had like competitions, and I wanted to get on and see how I could do it. So I did Nice and Slow by Usher. That was my first performance, and. Um, I was nervous, but I was really in the thrusting a lot. You know, that was my thing. You know. Honestly, that's where they saw me. The Tyrese saw me, and that's where my life changed. Well, our family is basically it's it's been around it's been around for many years, but it's just we decided to do our family seven years ago. Uh, it's a group of females, women. Um, some are male illusionists, some are femme queens, which are female. Uh, illusionists, but they're females. The same thing I was doing for the gay man, he was doing for the lesbian girls. People that do lip sync, that perform regularly or want to start performing, basically you get in when you have a family, you have the heads of the family, like, you know, referred to as the mother and the father, like we are. And basically we're in charge of doing like the recruiting for the family or for the people that people need to talk to if they're trying to get into the family. And what we do is show guidance to them, show some people how to entertain. Some people, you know, like to look at it, but they don't really know how to, how to, you know, showcase their own talents. So we work with them behind the scenes a lot, getting them ready so they can hit the stage and look professional when they do that. That's where we picked up Nation at, when we first picked up Nation. Um, actually, Nation was our first child in our family once we started it. We started it with just me and Heavenly, and right after we started it, Nation came right behind it because at the time, you know, he was um, in job court at the time, and he was on stage. <clears throat> I refer to Nation as he. I'm in front of all our kids. If they do male impersonation, they are he to us. If they films, of course, we call it she's, but and it's that I just have all the time? Or all just the time. Okay. That's all the time. And it's, it's, at first, you know, some people, some people just do it regularly. I do it all the time because to me, somebody that looks like a boy, I just have a hard time calling them she. I was friends with them way before they, yeah. I became a Tyree. And uh, mm -hmm. it's funny because I actually had to, even though we was friends, I still had to act right and play one point before I was even accepted to be a Tyree because I had a lot of little problems. <laughs> 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 the Tyrees, you know, wasn't really trying to deal with right then. But when I got it together, I actually was accepted and not a... I am. I'm sorry, I gotta do it. Nice, that's you got right. to. Yeah. Yeah. Can we see the head again? Yes. See the head, that's nice. I love my family. Nice. That's beautiful. This is life right here. You consider yourself a male illusionist or a drag king? Yes. Okay. In life or just on stage? I mean, are you a transgender female? I'm not transgender because okay. I'm not taking hormones. Okay. Okay. I mean, it, it, it gets kind of complicated with that because a lot of times when you define yourself as transgender, mm -hmm. people will say, oh, most transgender people are taking hormones. So they to to body. Body. And mm -hmm. I'm not doing any of that. All of my stuff is natural. Okay. I mean, it's just certain stuff about me is just point blank natural, like facial hair. Mm -hmm. And be like, how did that grow? It just grows out my face. It just mm -hmm. natural. What's the problem with the facial hair? They talk about. Ain't no problem. Some people, no problem. Some people I ain't just got no have baby got faces. Got see, you know, yeah. and they haven't grown any. I got about what? I got nine of them. Yeah, they haven't got any. It's all me. But I'm curious. What did you think when you first met? Sincere. He was different. He definitely struck my eye. <laughs> um, I had a person I was, I guess you would say, dating prior. But within, what, two two days? Oh, wow. I had gotten rid of them because it was out with the old and then with the new. Mm -hmm. And this is a person that's meant for me. You know, everybody has that made out there that they want or that they need to be their other half where they lack. Right. And this is my other half. Right. And, excuse my ignorance, I have to ask because of the film, are you a, a female? Are you a, <laughs> you are a female. She's a born, born, born and raised female. Okay. <laughs> okay. She she birthed you look like one, but I have to ask. Yes. She birthed the baby. <laughs> yes, I birthed the kids. No, Paris called her her name like she should explain. Oh, comes from, 
This, the reason why it gets kind of confusing with her is because, like, when she puts on makeup and stuff, she has a drag mother. The difference between the houses is one thing to be in a stud in a femme house okay. and one thing to be in a a male family. That's all you. Yeah. Yeah. Put some lotion on it. Put lotion on it. Let me see your lotion. Me see your lotion. <laughs> so it gets kind of confusing. And then they paint heavy. They paint like drags, even though the, she's a film. The pageant that's up there, when we went there, when we pulled up, they already had our entry fee paid. But that was in Florida. We went all the way to Florida when we pulled up and we was running in. She had got painted in the car. That's how late we were. Mm -hmm. So her drag mother was painting her in the car. And when she went, so she was all dragged out. So if you looked at her, she looked like a drag. I mean, she was beat though. Her face was, you know, she was beautiful, but. Yes, baby. Those are Pops is pretty, really good about if we come to him and ask him, you know, we want to do a show for whatever reason. He's real good about making that extra effort to get us on the show. So it really depends on who got a birthday party or something like that. But pretty much, hopefully we get on the show next weekend. Those are my crowds. Yeah, yeah. These, These are male crowds. Crowd. Okay. There's a male crowd. Those are female. These crowd. are heavy crowds, okay. and this is that's oh, that's wow. Yeah, it's just whole one. Oh wow, that's amazing. Let's so, so, be our pageant queens. Yeah. They live it. They breathe it. Um, they they do pageants. They do competitions. They do balls. They do it all. So whenever I run for a, a talent, I mean, mm -hmm. I run for a pageant. I want them to remember me. I don't want them to remember the person after me or whoever, whoever. I want them to go way back to when I won and say, oh no, I remember when Heavenly won that pageant. Nobody else has done it better. I push Nation real hard because Nation just has so much talent that mm -hmm. Nation just keeps in and it's like, yeah. you know, just waiting to get out there. And with North Carolina, I think North Carolina has been a setback for Nation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because Nation has won some pageants in North Carolina, mm -hmm. but had Nation stayed here mm -hmm. when he was in Atlanta, Nation would have all these trophies by himself. Yeah. Well, you to be um, under the wing of someone who all around is an entertainer, is a blessing, you know. And um, he taught me a lot of things that no one has ever taken the time to teach me. You know what I'm saying? And I think another reason why is I'm, I take so much pride in his craft because it was taught to me with pride. They're, they're out there and they do good stuff. And not, it's not all about looking good, but you have to have a good image for people to look okay. at. Yeah. Um, and I just like the way that he took what I call, not even trouble kids, but kids that, way with kids that you probably won't have nothing to do with. Yeah. And brought them to where they're a knit, close family and they do stuff together. And it's just, it's, it's really, it's inspiring because a lot of people look up to him. Okay. You know, just like he looked up to me, and we looked up to our father, Andre Stone, who's not with us anymore. He's in heaven. Okay. Um, that that was the true entertainer. Who, okay. Who gave us an outlook and gave us something that we wanted for. That's what it totally took me and trained me in a way that molded me for the craft. This craft that is called Male Illusions. years ago okay. I met Little Nation he was the only one of his kind down here and it sort of shocked me because at first I thought he was a well this is not to sweep your head up Nation <laughs> but I really really thought that he was a guy okay. and, oh, okay. <laughs> and so um, you know after a while me and Nation we became really really cool and we, I mean, from off gate, we appreciated and respected each other. But, you know, we just got closer throughout the years. And to this day, I love them. Me and Bree, I used to perform with Bree, but I didn't think she liked me. So we've actually gotten closer within the last two years. That's like my sister, like, we talk all the time. I live my life like this every day. So you do dress in, in full women oh, every yeah. day? Minus all this makeup. You know, you probably just pass me on the street. Just be like, oh, that's a big girl, you know. I think he's an excellent performer. Excellent. 
Excellent. Well, he also, speaks very. Uh, she do you speaks see very other highly. MIs on the scene, or is Nation kind of the the only male impersonator that you really have encountered? Now, see, they're gonna kill me for this. Well, wow. I see a lot of people, but I don't see them. Okay. But as far as someone that's making a mark, mm. and you, you there's a lot of talent, but no one's doing anything with it. Right. And in Nation's case, Nation is actually paving the way and making it a little bit easier, hopefully, for the next young king that comes out. What's your average? Like, is this your living? Is this what you do full time? No, this is part time. Part time. Um, it all depends on the crowd. Yeah. I see these new girls coming up and they know none of the history, none of the things that it takes to do what we can do. What we do. Yeah. Some people think, oh, I can just throw on a heel and a skinny jean and I'm hunt, I'm a girl. No. <laughs> well, if, you know. if you want to be a woman, lashes, nail, heel. Oh, I'm out. Oh, what? No, I'm, no, I'm just process. playing, I'm just playing. Because yeah, <laughs> 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 on a certain night, you can come out there with a hundred and some dollars. Nice, nice. Some nights you might make 20. Right. 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 Always be hacking a girl. So you're in the House of Revlon? <laughs> yes, I'm in the House of Revlon. Tell us about it. Yeah, how'd you become involved? What is a house? A house is, I'm going to take a scene from Paris and Vernon. It's a gay gang. Okay. It's basically a family. You know, we look out for each other. We walk balls. Can you define the difference for us between, between the pageants, the pageants and balls? Mm -hmm. um, it's not really a big difference because if you look at Paris is Burning and you compare pageants, mm -hmm. some of the categories back then and some of the categories that they have now. Okay. It's it's like they're almost cousins. Um, in the ballroom scene, there's different categories. There's runway, like I said, Vogue, and all these other categories. Where in a pageant, it's... Yeah. Oh, don't answer the question. I'm trying to. I'm giving oh, them an ahead. example of everything. I'm trying to break it down so they know. <laughs> trying to give a comparison. Compare and contrast. Mm -hmm. In pageants, there's evening gown, formal wear, question, question and answer, solo talent, talent. Yeah. So it's a real pageant. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. just like Miss America. Mm -hmm. okay. What did we just say? We're going to do a song we got. Oh, more to come. More to come. Is it more to come? More to come. This is just the beginning, baby. Can we go back to the conversation we were having earlier? So you you went into the club and you saw the drag queens and you were like, if they could do it, I could do it. You are a black woman from Wilmington, North Carolina, Bible Belt. Your family is very Christian. You didn't have any reservations about how this was going to go over on your real biological family? Of course. But I didn't think about it on the, the platform that I'm trying to reach for. I didn't think of it like this. I didn't think that I was going to be living this, breathing this. I didn't envision that this would turn out to be the craft, the art form that it is today and, and where it's gotten me. I didn't think about that. I just thought, you know, I was on stage for a while. And I wasn't in the hood, I was just in your little, you know, town. It wasn't even a community, it was like a little community. I grew up in Topsoil. Topsoil was like, uh, kind of like boring, by the beach. It's a nice place, nice area. You know, this is cousin from knee high. We were just looking at some pictures and we, were, we got the same dresses on, we were about four years old. We ain't had no gang, we ain't had no, no craziness going on. A couple times we've had little bonfires, eat, always eat good. But at the same time, you always had to make, make the best of what you got there. That's probably what brought a lot of talent out of her. As a child, she's always been um, 
very high spirited. She liked to sing, she liked to do her own thing at all times. Kind of what she does now, how she entertains center of, she can command your attention. I used to, um, I used to run through my grandmother's house. Got this little mark right here. I ran through my grandmother's house. She just cleaned the, the, the sliding glass door, double pane, and I hit one of the panes, broke the first pane, left my, my forehead on the other pane. I don't understand what happened. She was flying through it. It was clean though, the, it was clean. She ran slammed through it, the whole thing. That was painful. <laughs> it, it was funny, cause Curl face and she, Lane was still hurt, but Curl was still like talking like, okay, you shouldn't have been doing this, you shouldn't have been doing it. If this wouldn't have happened, it was, <laughs> my grandma, I love her to death. I moved to um, Apex, North Carolina when I was um, in the, a sophomore. So I played in the band um, in Apex, and then I got into drama and theater, and I was into that real hard in my senior year. I really loved the feeling that I had when I was um, doing the plays and doing my monologues and so on and so forth, and the whole other person that I could portray. And I got to stop you with everything in me. I'm not preaching, need you to stand with me. Been where you been, stood in your shoes. Tears from my cheek from the words that this view it is better. I had to have some sort of social life to be interested. I just needed an outlet. And my mother was not having me, you know, just drop out. That was not going down, so. My mother did everything in her power to help me graduate, and it just worked out that way. I was blessed. I feel all alone. Like a I wasn't out all the way, but I was, you know, I was confused, didn't know exactly which way to go. I, I think her being gay kind of like made things a little sour, I said. Okay. And that was because of what they believed in terms of Christianity? Yes. Okay, okay. But I didn't act on it until after I graduated. Plus my father had passed away, so. My father, he was not, he was a hard man. He wasn't some, he wasn't an easy man. So, I mean, I, it was a, it was some times where my father was rather stern with me, very stern with me so that I could understand. I think that's what it all boiled down to because I see a lot of myself, a lot of my father in myself. So I can't, I kind of see where it comes from. You know what I'm saying? So, when he, he, away? he passed away in 99. In um, April 1999, yeah, it was in a car accident. Him and the driver were drunk, and um, my father ended up um, dying. He went out of the windshield, and the driver like had a broken leg. But wow. Yeah. What grade were you in at that time? I was a senior. Yeah, so right when everything was happening. Yeah, prom and everything. So it was crazy. It was hard. How did you manage to get through that pain that you felt? I don't I don't know. Honestly, I don't even know how I got through it. Like, I'm not through it still. I just don't think about it. And when I graduated, it was nothing. Like, and it was such an emptiness inside of me. It was so empty. And I was longing for a, a, a way to, to, to still perform and wanted to do it for the community, wanted to get paid. You know, and I saw the queens, and that's just, I can remember what I was wearing the first time I seen a queen. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, I remember the moment, the first time I seen a queen perform, and I just wanted to do it. Had I just, you had any, um, any kind of interaction, well not interaction, had you seen queens before, like RuPaul or something I mean, like that? I mean, not really. It wasn't like that. It was interesting, because I was trying to find out who I was and what I was trying to do, and. You know, didn't know if I was supposed to be with a man or not. I just was out there. I felt like, you know, I wanted to be out there with other people that have similar feelings like myself. And so obviously, um, when you when you heard what she was doing uh, with her life, that in terms of her um, male illusion uh, entertaining, was that a shocking thing to you, or um, like what was your first thought? The, my first thought. If anything was shocking was how, uh, how, how good she was, mm -hmm. you know. And I'm a person. If you do, you know, that's awesome. That's what I, the most, 
if you have to say anything shocking to it was how good she she can she is at her craft at her okay. at her job. Okay. So that yeah. was that was the first thing you thought. You yeah. You I'll saw talk. her perform and you were like, holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, like but the, you know, anybody if you see somebody building a house and it's it's on deck, it's on point. Anyone to be good at their craft like that, that's gonna blow you away. So yeah. It's yeah. Shocking. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. I do wonder what my father would think of me now than what what I was, you know. I used to have boyfriends and stuff like that, like so I don't know how he would he would react to me now in the lifestyle that I chose for myself. So again, don't know how and where to turn then. Table. Oh, carry a table, honey. Uh, honey. A table. I'm the performance. I can't do that. Well, you know what? I'm the first lady, so. Got to have the mascot. <laughs> how, how would you describe the first lady? Oh, man. What about my love? She's very kind before anything. She's wow. such a girl. <laughs> such a fucking lady. <laughs> Is it fair to say that she's cunt? Yeah. <laughs> Ow. Yes. Cunt. She, well, what did she say after Monday? After she after the performance? Did she have a good time? Oh yeah, she enjoyed her. She always enjoys. We always have a good time together. She's my best friend ever. I love her to death. Sometimes we use it as a compliment. And it's just like the epitome of like fear. It's like like cunt, like you, you know, film, total film. Okay. We actually met on AOL. Okay. okay. I was one addictive Coco and she was um, soft girl 20. And to this day, <laughs> don't laugh. No, it's cute, it's so cute. Her mother is very um, open-minded and supportive. She's very um, good to us. Her mother loves her unconditionally. That's her baby girl, so. Her father's getting used to me. You know, that's his little girl, so. Her brother's cool with me. I mean, I love her family, the people, the ones that I've met. If they're anything like the family that I've already met, then there ain't gonna be no problem. I'm a seven and a half. Baby's a seven, yes. Six and a half, 2012, here we go. I have to do it right, I have to do it the right way. Asking questions, you have to ask questions the right way. Just... My family accept her as a person, but as far as our relationship is concerned, they don't care for it at all. So, you know, that's a struggle in itself. But, you know, <laughs> can't change that. So what is your it's role tough. in her in her entertainment career? Basically, I have to keep her happy first so that she can get off of that show. <laughs> and of course, I do that because I Because <laughs> you are the first lady. She is definitely the addition that I've always wanted, needed, yearned for, cried out for. She is definitely the... She makes me weak, so she's a weakness of mine. Next year, sometimes you will, if you pay attention, she'll put her hands on her head. She'll have that twitch in her walk. <laughs> you just have to pay attention. Now you guys, but you get um, sort of upset when your twin sister, when your twin sister asked you to wear a dress at her wedding. Yeah, I mean, of course it was something that upset me because that's not what I normally would wear. Like, but she, it's her wedding. It's her wedding. That's what she wants. And I can give her that. I'm not against that. You know, like, I would definitely feel a little bit uncomfortable because that's not what I'm used to. So you did, you did nation when she went to her sister's wedding? You did her nation? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I did the transformation. How was that transformation? It was, it was really fun, but, you know, actually it wasn't the only 
thing that was transforming was the hair and the makeup. Well, the different kind of makeup, you know. And it was all nation. My baby is beautiful both ways. <laughs> how did you, how did you um, accept the transformation? How did that make you feel to see her look just as cunt as you? I was <laughs> waiting on this day. Like, I was counting down the days. And when I saw it, it just like took my breath away. She was so beautiful. And she actually got into character. She really was someone else. As she would say, Antoinette. Antoinette was worried about her hair. She was. Antoinette was more organized than Nation, which surprised me. Wow. Yeah. But she was beautiful. That's fine. We can just do it without it. I don't have any plans, aspirations, wants, needs to change my sex or gender. I don't have a problem with who I am at all. I'm just a different kind of girl. <laughs> she's, uh -huh. she's bitchy, uh -huh. bitchy like a fem as well. <laughs> yes, she's, I agree. I she's, agree. She's sensitive, mm -hmm. and I love that. I know Nation told me that she considers herself a, a soft butch, and at the end of the night, when the show is over, it comes off, and she's a woman. Clothes don't make the person; the person make the person. And if I had on a dress, I would flip it just like I was. I mean, it is what it is. I'm a female. I can't deny that. And I don't wake up and go to bed every morning wishing that I was a man. Never. Hey, that's nation. Teach his own. I'm right. Boy, How are you? Long. So okay. you, you like I to be referred to as a he? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm sorry. Like when I saw you yesterday, I was about to say, what's up, sis? That's no, not, yeah. no. No. Yes. no. <laughs> I'm really, I'm just going to correct you. You know, okay. a lot of people, they feel a different way about it, but it's just, that's my livelihood. This is not a game to me. This is how I live. And, and as soon as I get the money to get them off, they're gone. As bad as my period is, I still have it. Every month. I'm abroad. But, okay. Um, definitely so you do consider yourself a transgender matter. female? Well, that's the question. No, is it no. about the performance uh, or really? is it lifestyle? Yeah. I don't want to say transgender. It's just the fact of not wanting to have to bind all the time. Okay. Right. Okay, so it really right. is about being a performer. Right. No, not yeah, it's about it's performing. It's walking around. Nobody know. wants to walk around right. like that. Like, I'm not going to walk around anywhere like that. Yeah, Never. Probably. You cannot call my pops no her. Like, that's just not the business. I know I confuse a lot of people because I use the male bathroom. No matter where I go, I'm walking in the male's bathroom. And I use the urinal. I don't go in the stalls. I'm going to stop at this urinal and use it. And that causes a lot of confusion, too, because especially when we're doing pageants and different stuff. Like, I thought y'all said there was a girl running for this, you know, stud pageant. They ain't using the urinal. Um, but How do you do that? FTM products. <laughs> It's, 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 FT, it's FTM products. I okay. mean, just it's it's products out there. So I mean, like I mean, I've been in the urinal looking, and people were like, "I thought that was a girl." So they'll peep over the stall and look, and then they'll see a hand like that is a dude, cause it looks it's realistic, mm -hmm. it's soft, it ain't like hard, and it's just if you see some using the urinal, you're like, "Oh my goodness, this is a man." <laughs> so you won't make you show us, will we? <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about that? I mean, that's her personal. That's her personal view. I mean, his personal view. Excuse me. And that's where it gets confusing too. When people say, "Okay, well, I want to have my chest redone." Oh, wait, so you are transgender? You watch my That's not that necessarily right. it either. That's his. That's his. Like my life is different. That's why I, I, I live here because I'm different. It's just the fact of like looking like like Nella. Nella has it harder than me because. Trying to bind and right. different stuff like that. Like we're about to order a different binder for Nella mm. online. How do you feel about? I mean, the fact that they seem to identify more as he, but Nation doesn't. I mean, is that one of the reasons why she came back home to North Carolina? I think that it causes confusion between genders when you're trying to explain what you would like to be, because everyone, you know, tries every day to. Um, get people to understand and when it gets more technical you know <coughs> female fam stud all that it's it's hard they they definitely didn't identify with the word transgender it is what it is I myself and me and they are they, them like you know sincere feels a certain way about himself heavenly feels this way about herself like they're personal people you feel me and I'll all I know is the category, I can't put myself in a category. I know I'm a woman. For them to call themselves a he when you were born, you were born a girl. 
I mean, you can be what you want to be. You can call yourself what you want to call yourself. But, you know, Nation can identify with that because she knows she was born a female. We cut for a second. Even if a black woman is feeling like she could be a transgender, you know, is that just something that the black community doesn't accept? Like it. You know? I think it's taboo. I definitely think it's, it's a taboo word. Yeah. I think it's like black and white. It's like black and white. I think that society sees usually women that are like myself as transgendered, not wanting to inquire and ask questions on what we believe in and what we want, you know. That's really what it is. Like, you see stories about transgendered Americans. You don't never see any stories about females who are females but are like the masculine kind. Yeah. You know, or any stories that ha that's involving them. As a community, we are all supposed to work together to make it a little bit easier and a little bit better for, for the next person that's coming out. And for you to discriminate when we're being discriminated on is sort of kind of... Backwards. Yeah. It's a lot of people who think that or may believe that it doesn't really take a lot of work to be a, a king or a male illusionist, but you know, if you would actually go into the dressing rooms and see what it takes to be a queen or a king, you would see just how dedicated the artists and the entertainers are, uh, male or female. Tonight is Three World Creed Ladies Night. We want to welcome each and every one of you out tonight. Thank you guys for coming out and joining us. Productions is a troupe of entertainers that travel to different venues and pretty much shut it down. We run the club, we run the spot, we run the show, we run everything. We offer quality entertainment, like uh, entertainers that are crowned nationally and that are, you know, have been doing this for years, as well as entertainers that are up and coming and that are trying to learn the craft a little bit, bit more. We try to take our time and we actually have uh, rehearsals on Mondays, every other Monday, to um, help those that, you know, want the help or want to develop the craft a little more and learn a little bit more. They can practice, do whatever, practice production numbers, make music. I don't see anybody else out here working like I'm working. I'm trying to reach a different avenue. I'm trying to make it so that we are just as marketable as the queens are across the country. You know, she's constantly evolving, constantly up to date on Usher. It's not my personal favorite. <laughs> she's up to date on Well, I'm very proud of her. You know, all this is like still new to me, what's really going on with the whole situation. But um, I'm on for it and, you know, I support her all the way with it. You know what, I just think that it hasn't been brought to the forefront as like it should be. Mm. And that's what Nation is doing. As long as Nation's been in North Carolina, Nation should have been, you know, be more accepted now. I mean, just it's slowly working in now. A lot of the family did not like it, but you know, they have to accept. That's something you have to accept. See, everyone's going to say something about something. What's up to you, Richardson? If you're going to do it, though. do it like Nation. If you're going to yeah. half-ass, step the fuck back. How many years? For real, because like, it's so many people that do it horribly that make it harder for her when it's time for her to do her thing. I want to share what I have with everyone possible, and I don't think that the opportunities would be as great as I have where I am now. I can, where I can, you know, I have a home base, I have my family here, and then I can expand and go other places. I always can come home. Never be a place like home. Okay, the actor. We're ready. So yeah, tell us about my burning. Because you rap about it a lot. You use the burn. What do you call the burning? Murderville, <laughs> money earning Mel Vernon, the Vern. 
four square miles. Yep, you know yep, what I mean? Yep. All of us. Mount Vernon. Mount Vernon, New York. All day. From a heavy D, Denzel Washington, Felicia Rashad, Dick Clark, the list goes on. Kim for life. You know what I'm saying? A lot of big people come out of Mount Vernon. So we uh, definitely we wrote and produced the joint. You know what I'm saying? We do our own tracks. So yeah, they try to cut us up. But um, collaborated on the entire thing from our verses. Of course, we always write our own verses. Noah and I collaborated on the hook. Um, Noah uh, produced the track. We invited some awesome, amazing artists to be a part of it. Uh, Tora Torres and Nefertiti, as well as Studology 101, DZ and Poops, and they kind of took what we gave them and they they went with it. They were happy to be a part of it. They loved our direction, and it was just amazing actually working and writing for other artists for something that was such a special topic to us. More than one third of LGBT youth report having made a suicide attempt. Nearly half of young transgender people have seriously thought about taking their lives and one quarter report having made a suicide attempt. It was a, it's an epidemic. You know, um, suicide within the LGBT community, especially for young people, is an epidemic, unfortunately. And it's been addressed by people, but nobody really within the community that can truly relate that has been through it. And we felt it, it was our duty to shine light on it and, and, you know, to continue to talk about it because people died off. You know, she could speak more passionately about it because this is something that she experienced herself, you know, with the thoughts of suicide and stuff like that. So. That's very true. If, uh, if a lot of people don't know about Kim for Life's history, in 2008 we came out on a PBS documentary series called In the Life. And uh, during that series, I let the public know, number one, that I'm a, uh, a lesbian, African-American female. And then number two, in high school, I was, I didn't know what to do. I come from an amazing family. I was afraid. And so instead of, I'm not going to front, I was a punk. And I want everybody to be a punk. I was afraid to commit suicide. But I wanted to. I didn't know what to do, so I faked it. And I told that story on PBS. I took a bunch of pills, threw them down the toilet, only took one or two, wrote like a fake dramatic letter to my mother, and then she came up, you tried to kill yourself, oh my god, da 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 And I just wanted to tell her that I was gay, and I've, I, and I've been through that. I know what the feelings were when I thought that I wanted to take my life. And fortunate enough for me, I had such a great family structure, such great friends around me, that I kind of did it the fake way to get attention and I just kind of, it, it meant a lot to me. And I just didn't want the, wanted to leave all the drama and hype around it and the It's Get Better campaign and all the famous people talking about it that never went through it. I wanted people to know that when you look at me, you're looking at you and I've been through it. The song was a direct statement to people who are going through the situation and we wanted to speak directly to the people who felt alone. That's why the song is called Lone Rager. Like you feel like you're riding down this road, but really at the end of the song it says that there's hope after all and there's light at the end of the tunnel. I mean, we got a lot of friends and, our, and, and people in our media circle who are transgender and, um, you know, people need to be aware of that and be respectful. Respect you that. You know, a, a address a person how they feel they didn't need to be addressed. You're not going to sit up here and call a woman who identifies as a man, she. Call her he. You know, call him he. And shout that, out. That has, shout out to all my trans Shout out, out to my dude, to Sir that. Jesse. And he will tell you every time okay. that respect me as a he. As That's a my he. dude, Sir Jesse. Shout out to my homie. Yeah. Definitely is taboo because people are still trying to find the confidence in themselves to identify who they are. And then when a whole sexual sexuality comes into play, that makes it even more worse when you're trying to identify your actual gender. So it's something that we have to work past, but it's all education. You know, stop being ignorant. If you're curious, ask a person. And most of the time, they're going to give you the answers. You know, just ask in a nice way. Um, it has the, the whole part of people living, especially in the black community with the whole label thing, it, it has been a major issue for us because we've always been the type of people to kind of not label ourselves. And that has confused people in our community. They always like, oh, why you got makeup on? Or why your hair is out? Like sometimes I rock, you know, bangs and my hair is out. I got braids now, but I'll get a little bit more femme. And I feel like a lot of the times I have to explain myself. And, you know, it's made it a little bit harder. But at the same time, it started to change people's view of how you should view lesbians, that we're not all put in one set category. And we're opening up people's minds to see, like, hey, you don't have to be forced to stay inside this box. Like, you can go and be who you want to be and date who you want to date and, and feel good about yourself at the same time, so. The, the biggest surprise and craziness for me was when we dropped our hit single, Make a Girl, in 
2008 and I mean we were 11 weeks straight on logo I mean it just got us coverage in out magazine curve major LGBT publications and when we went online to look at the feedback our stud what they categorized themselves as stud our stud at AG sisters in the community was going hammer on our video why are you guys wearing makeup what the hell first of all the video is called makeup girl so that would be a nice play on words second of all we're going on major network TV we're showing ourselves to be beautiful women representing you and making major network TV with LGBT themes in the video and the only thing they were concerned about was that I possibly had on some foundation and a little bit of eyeshadow and mascara and I was just floored by the whole thing like the, the message is be who you're gonna be do what you're gonna do as long as you're not hurting nobody and you're living your life in a positive manner and that's what you can do don't be a statistic. It gets better. Keep your head up and you just hold on. Keep your head up and you just move on. I'm not just a lonely rock again. Don't know how and where to turn it then. Keep your head up and you just hold on. Well, what do we get to talk about me?